oh it's not really specific doesn't that really really like narrow you down it doesn't at all hello and welcome back to my channel today i'm going to be talking about some of the things that you can do with a neuroscience degree i get asked this all the time like should i do neuroscience isn't that really specific but i think doing a neuroscience degree is really beneficial for so many careers so my background is that i did a bsc in neuroscience started in 2012 and then i ended up changing the bsc into an MSI. So this is something you can do in the UK. You add on an extra year at the end of your BSc. So you don't get a BSc at all. You end up being a master in science. So that's what I did because I wasn't sure initially about really what I wanted to do. I've always gone through a sort of turmoil between doing art-based subject or science-based subject and I ended up going with science, obviously, because here I am now as a PhD student in neuroscience. But people's response to me when I said I'm doing a neuroscience degree would be like, oh, isn't that really specific? Doesn't that really, really like narrow you down to what you can do afterwards? It doesn't at all, because with a neuroscience degree, you normally do a common first year with all of the other like biomedical subjects and genetics and other things like that. So you end up getting a really broad knowledge of human biology in general. And then as the years go, on you select which modules you want to do and with the neuroscience degree we had to select a certain number that were neuroscience based but then the others were sort of free to choose within the school of like life sciences so I did mainly neuroscience modules but I also did a fair few pharmacology genetics I even did some evolutionary biology so just because the degree classification is neuroscience doesn't mean all you're going to be studying is the brain I entered into a neuroscience degree not having a clue what I was going to do afterwards so I think that's something that I always say that if you're passionate about a subject that is what you should choose to do at university because you have to do a lot of independent study it really does rely on you enjoying the content so that's basically what I did I just went with I really want to learn more about the brain so that is what I'll do I've ended up in a PhD now but that was really not my intention for doing a neuroscience degree what a neuroscience degree gives you as well which I think isn't as prominent in other biology based subjects is because we're still learning a lot about the brain which means you end up writing essays so for my degree I only had a few exams where I ended up doing short answer questions and none of them were in the neuroscience subject so you really learn how to be analytical and critical it really does combine sciences and then more like art subjects that require this sort of analytical approach so doing a neuroscience degree gives you a really broad range of skills now I've come out of the other side of an undergrad degree I have more of a clue about the different careers that you can go into with a neuroscience degree. It doesn't just mean that you go down this academic route. There are lots and lots of options. So I thought I would walk you through 10 of them now with a bit about what these careers are and just to show that you can do a lot if you choose to study the brain. The first career path that I want to mention is academia. So this is probably the most obvious career path and this is currently the path I am on, although I am probably going to deviate from this path. But academia is when you pursue further study after your undergraduate degree in the form of a PhD where you are doing independent research to contribute towards a specific field and with neuroscience there is a lot of opportunity to go into PhDs because there is a lot of focus now on the brain and brain related disorders so the way into this pathway is normally to apply for a PhD with science PhDs a lot of these are already pre-funded so you don't really have to come up with the idea yourself and then apply for funding and once you've got the PhD if you want to continue in academia the route normally goes that you do a postdoc position a postdoctoral research where again you go and do lab based research contributing towards the field and then you can move up to be a group leader where you will direct the research but not really be in the lab and then if you are working at a university you can go through the teaching route as well and move up to professorship so I'd say this is a really good career path if you love science you like to work independently and if you have a lot of innovative ideas based off current research and you want to expand upon them then this is a really great career path for you. Another career which isn't often spoken about as much I don't think it's as well known is to become a clinical scientist so in the UK you can apply to be a clinical scientist in the NHS this is our national health service and this is to be a specialized role in a hospital and the specialized roles go all the way from like cardiology to geneticists and there is a neurophysiology speciality and this would train you up to be able to do things like EEGs and 
other brain recording techniques in the hospital. There's normally only one neurophysiologist or two in an individual hospital, so you would have a lot of responsibility of having to perform these different assessments. I'll leave the link in the description below to read more about these NHS placements, but to my understanding, you do get paid for your training, you get paid, I think it's a two year placement, and they train you up and you also get a master's from this as well. I would say this is a really good career if you want to be more patient facing. Even if you're working in disease-based research, you don't really interact with the patients with those brain diseases. Whereas if you did like a neurophysiology clinical scientist placement, you will be interacting with patients with these different conditions every day. So if you really want that patient facing role, this could be a good career for you. With a neuroscience degree, you can also enter into the pharmaceutical industry or the biotech industry. Now with these careers, if you want to progress, I would say getting a PhD is a good idea because that allows you to really climb your way to the top. But without a PhD, you can still go into these different industries to aid the production of drugs and to come up with new technologies. Now with neuroscience, we are learning a lot more about the brain and different disorders of the brain. And with that comes a lot of pharmaceutical interventions. So with disorders like Alzheimer's disease, we are now trying to treat this disease with different drugs. So this requires a lot of testing, optimization, and that is done normally by big pharmaceutical companies. And also with neuroscience, we are at this precipice where we now have the technology to really, really get into the brain and understand it. And that is where biotech companies come in. They're always striving to improve the technology that we use in the lab. And I think that is something that is really, really cool. If you like that technological aspect to things and you are creative and you want to really think, okay, how can we look at this problem in a different way? How can we make this technique better? And that would make biotech a really good option for you. Another popular route when you finish a neuroscience degree is to go into medicine. With this, you need another degree and you can actually, with the BSc, apply for a postgraduate medical degree. So this is if you wanna be, again, more patient facing and do something like psychiatry or neurosurgery, you do have to have the medical degree as well. Also in the UK, if you do postgraduate medicine, the NHS does partially fund your fees. So you do get a deduction from your fees if you do this type of degree. And with all medical degrees, you enter into your foundation years into the NHS straight afterwards. So you are guaranteed a job at the end of the degree. If you are really keen for that patient facing role, this is something you can do after you've done an undergraduate degree in neuroscience. It's not off the table just because you haven't done an undergrad medical degree. My partner is doing a postgraduate medical degree at Oxford. If you have any questions about postgraduate medicine, you can ask me in the comments and I will ask him and feed back to you because I can't really answer those questions. You can also be a medical writer if you've done a neuroscience degree. This is like a science communication based role. Normally the jobs are going in like pharmaceutical industries and your role really here as a medical writer is to communicate the science that's going on in an appropriate way for the audience. So this could be a lay person audience, so non-scientific. It could be for other scientists to read. So you'll be making things like press releases, brochures, scientific news. So you really need to have good analytical skills, which a neuroscience degree definitely gives you and a strong scientific knowledge. So this is why I say doing neuroscience where you have the understanding of the brain, which is obviously very hard to grasp. You also get other understanding of different biology subjects and also have the essay side of things where you have to be analytical. It teaches you how to be a good scientific writer. So with a neuroscience degree, I think being a medical writer is a really, really good option. With a neuroscience degree, you can also do public engagement work. Public engagement work spans so many different sectors that I can't even name them all, but there are a lot of, for example, neuro-based charities to do with neurodegenerative diseases and brain cancer. So you can work as a public engagement officer for a charity. You can also go down the route of working on exhibitions in museums because there is always a lot of cool science exhibitions out there. They need people with scientific knowledge to guide these exhibitions and make sure they are accurate, but also accessible to the public. You could also have, you know, a science blog, which is what I have. You could also go into TV and media and you could do science communication in a more broadcast style and do fun science shows and get out there in that way. And you can also write popular science books. So all of these things sort of come under public engagement because you are bringing science to the public. And I would say this type of role is amazing if you are really, really creative and like science and you can come up with ideas of how to make really hard subjects open to everyone and so everyone 
everyone can understand them. This is more the route that I'm following now with you know, my YouTube and with my blog and Instagram and other fun projects that I'm doing on the side. Getting into this industry is a little bit harder, but I would say if you are interested in it, start a blog now, start a science communication channel on YouTube, on Instagram, on TikTok, and just start playing around with how you can get these really hard subjects to the public in a really fun and creative way. There are no bounds, you can do it however you want to. A role which I think is so important right now and we haven't really appreciated as much over the past years is being a scientific journalist. With the current situation, we have really relied on scientific journalism to communicate what is going on at the present moment in time. So I would say again, doing a neuroscience degree is really, really good for doing journalism because you get the skill of writing essays. So you are used to describing science in a long form way. To become a scientific journalist, I would recommend doing a master's in scientific journalism. You can do them or a general master's in journalism because you've already got that scientific knowledge just so you get all the tips of the trades on how to be a journalist and then applying for work experiences at newspapers and magazines and other places that report scientific news. This is really, really beneficial and you can look for these internships. There is a website, can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. I'll put it in the description below where these internships come up all the time. You can do a summer internship during your degree at one of these places and you can also do internships once your degree is finished if it's something you're really keen to pursue. But I think doing a degree in neuroscience, if you want to be a scientific journalist, is a really, really good subject to do it in because of those essays, even though at the time I hated them. <laughs> with a neuroscience degree, you can also go into teaching. And with a degree, you could go into a program like Teach First, you get experience on the job. So you go to schools and you are trained as you are teaching, you are paid for this. And normally with science-based subjects, you get paid a little bit more. I know that's the case for chemistry and physics because these types of teachers are lacking. So if you have a science degree as your basis, then you can go in for those potentially higher paid roles. But I would say if you really love teaching young people about science, then going into secondary education is super beneficial because I think students can really, really look up to you if you have a scientific degree, especially in something as cool as neuroscience. You can be like, kids, I know exactly what you're thinking because I studied the brain. Something else to consider as a potential career is going into scientific policy if you have a neuroscience degree. This is where you work for the government and you influence the decisions they're making based on scientific evidence. If you have any scientific degree, this is obviously gonna be very beneficial. But I think neuroscience is good because it's a health-based subject. So human biology is always good to direct health-based policy. And again, the analytical skills you get from doing a neuroscience degree will really help you sift through the evidence that you need to help direct government policy. So if you're interested in politics and if you're interested in how the country is run and how science is used to direct responses to situations like now, then that could be a really good role for you. The final career path that I'm going to mention is if you do a degree in neuroscience, study in the brain, then a really great opportunity for you to go into is to go into artificial intelligence based companies. All these big tech companies like Google and and Apple and all these Silicon Valley companies, they really like individuals who have a neuroscience degree because what artificial intelligence is, is we're trying to make processes more streamlined and like they are human. And what is more human than the brain? So if you have a neuroscience degree, this is looked on as really beneficial because you can understand the inner workings of the brain and then apply that to making new technologies using artificial intelligence. This is an industry which is forever expanding there is just countless opportunities there. So if you are interested in going into that type of industry, tech, artificial intelligence, then you can definitely do that with a neuroscience degree. So there's 10 careers to consider if you are thinking about pursuing a neuroscience degree. Like I said, I would just be sure you're really passionate about the subject. If you're interested in the human brain, then go for it. Just study neuroscience because there are so many opportunities for you to do afterwards. It's not just so specific that you're never gonna get a job. So I would say, if you love the brain, do it. Thank you so much for watching. If you are liking the channel, please subscribe. And if you have any questions about neuroscience careers, especially if it's doing a PhD or like public engagement science communication work, feel free to message me on social media or drop a comment below and I will get back to you. I'll catch you next time.